Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dive Into Diet. I'm with the star of the show, Lucas Schmidt. What's going on, man? Herb's back. Herb is back. Herb is back. What, what, what does that mean? Tell the audience what that means. That means if you watched the last episode... Which will be linked below. Look at that. Which was about herbs. It's just a cheesy joke about Herb. He's come back to visit it's us a spelling. Today. It's a spelling it's, thing. Yeah. Herbs. H-E-R. Silence H. Yes. Silent H. Silent H. I'm going to talk about three more herbs today that we can now, be using do you even cooking. Like these? Do you like these herbs? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably not going to pick an herb I don't want to talk about or that I don't <laughs> like. Don't so know. it's safe to say Lucas does like these herbs. <laughs> uh, the first one the first one went over basil, rosemary, and thyme. thyme. Yeah. What are these? Cilantro, mint, and bay leaf. Cilantro is so interesting because some people just hate it. Yeah, so I I think last time it just kind of happened this way. It was like most popular, pretty popular, least known. That's kind of how it's going on this list as well. We'll start with the most popular. Well, or most known because some people absolutely hate cilantro. It's like a real thing. Yeah, I actually think it's a genetic thing uh, with the taste buds. Uh, It either tastes like soap or it tastes like heaven. So, But even those that love the taste, I'm included could understand why it tastes like soap which is really weird it's like yeah i understand how you think it tastes like soap but i don't care i like how it tastes i don't know yeah it's interesting uh it, to me cilantro smells a little bit this sounds real everyone's gonna hate cilantro but <laughs> i still love it so uh, maybe you won't it smells a little bit like stink bugs too you know like stink bugs when they they go off that chemical smell Cilantro can sometimes, like if you blindfolded me and I had a stink bug and cilantro, I might get them mixed up. You're really selling the cilantro. But it makes me wonder, thing. why do I want to eat it? <laughs> That's terrible. Guys, you know, if you, I had if you stink, love cilantro, don't let this change your... I'm going to confess something really horrible. It's not really that horrible. It was an accident. Uh, I have tasted the stink bug chemical before not knowing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a bowl of beef stew one time, and I was in a hurry, so I was I took it in the car, and it was all I had to eat. I had a rehearsal at the theater, and I wasn't going to get food for a long time, so I was eat, scarfing this down, and it started to taste really weird. Not horrific, just weird, and I thought, what, what is that? Is something off with this beef? It's gone off. What's wrong with this? And so I just I looked down. There was a stink bug floating. Oh. It had flown when I was going to the car. It had fallen in, I guess, from outside. Because it was just... And um, the worst part is, is like, well, I fished it out. I thought, I'm not wasting that beef. So I picked <laughs> the beef out. It was like, that's going to be the most filling part, at least. I can't. I'll starve. So I did continue and finish off that That's beef, quite so. the confession. It is a confession. We've all oh, What there. were we talking about? Cilantro. Cilantro. That's right. Let's move on. So cilantro... Uh, very common, mostly associated, I think, in America with like South American food, Mexican, particular Central American food, Mexico, um, salsa, yep. uh, almost any Mexican dish. You you know, if you go to a restaurant or you make it traditional, you're going to probably see some cilantro shredded up on top. Mm-hmm. Uh, cilantro is used in Middle Eastern cooking as well, um, and some Asian food as well. Mm. So actually, one of my favorite pairings with cilantro is like fresh pineapple and cilantro is wonderful together um which is probably more of an asian kind of thing to do but um it's delicious so let's start with the nutrition part though the boring part yeah and as i've mentioned if you watched the previous episode we talked about how a lot of these i wish herbs were more studied in the clinical setting uh so the research is doesn't you know meet the standard i would like uh there's a chemical in cilantro called uh, dodecanol, or, or but not ol. It doesn't end in ol. It's an al. Okay. So I don't know. That's worth noting. I'll spell it in case anybody wants to Google this chemical further. D o d e c e n a l. Dodecanol. Mm. Uh, it's an antimicrobial, meaning antibacterial. You know, things that grow where you don't want them to grow. Um, and it may. <laughs> the big word is may. Help protect your body against infections caused by tainted food, particularly salmonella. That doesn't mean if you eat a handful of fresh cilantro, you can eat rotten eggs. I'm not saying that. Well, it does kind of seem that herbs have that, like all of them have that in common. They're a little yeah, protective antimicrobial, yeah. of the food. I'm wondering if that's, I don't know if that's why bugs don't like a lot of herbs. Like, you know, some, they say plant these herbs in your garden to protect 
prevent certain insects from coming. I don't know if the chemical's yeah. too strong for the insect. Mm. Another cool fun fact maybe people don't know about cilantro is it's the same plant that coriander comes from. Have you heard of coriander? It's no. not as well known as cilantro. Coriander is a seed. It's like a little round. It's very citrus flavored. It doesn't taste like cilantro leaf. But coriander is used in Indian cooking and Middle mm. Eastern cooking a lot. It's delicious. It's wonderful. Ground coriander or whole, they'll cook it, infuse it in oils and things. But they're all, it's that's the same plant. It's you the know, same plant. You know what I get cilantro confused with sometimes is chives. Chives? Chives. Oh. Chives is an onion. Yeah. It's like a wild onion. And um, cilantro looks, this, it looks similar it looks similar. It looks similar if you buy it dried, especially. You can buy dried chives and dried cilantro. Um... I prefer cilantro fresh for the flavor. Yeah. Dried cilantro to me does not at all taste like fresh. It has a completely different flavor. For me, it does. It could just be so my taste. you like taste, cooked, but cooked cilantro? No, I like fresh. I mean, you can cook it. I prefer to put it fresh on something after it's cooked. Fresh versus Because it, it wilts a little bit. Not okay. my favorite. Um, but um, that was the primary, the primary sort of medicinal purpose I found was the antimicrobial. Mm. aspect flavor wise it pairs well mostly with savory although some sweet particularly fruit you know tropical fruits and things like that um it's i like it in salsa of course you can't have salsa without cilantro in it that's ridiculous um it goes well with beef chicken uh pork anything that you know cuban food as well i should yeah. note uses cilantro black beans great with cilantro on top um I consider them incomplete without cilantro on top. Um, and it goes well with tomato, actually rice with fresh fruit. If you cook some jasmine rice and fresh pineapple and fresh cilantro, it's wonderful. Yep. So that's sort of what I would do cilantro. Uh, unless it tastes like soap to you, then you can just squirt some Dawn dish soap on if your you rice. If you fall in that category, <laughs> Don't just do that. move on to the next one. <laughs> next one is mint. Actually, mint's very well known. It's not... I don't think mint is commonly cooked with. Like you don't, you maybe don't think of mint as something. Yeah, I'm well, gonna I, I don't put think of mint, mint on my chicken. I don't think of mint as an herb, really. I think of what it think as of it? Uh, just a pure flavor. Like I think okay, of mint fair flavor. Enough. Yeah, like mint oil. Let's, a lot of times, mint oil is used to flavor chocolate. Yeah, mint chocolate. Yeah, um, or artificial, like they copy it in the artificial. But sense. you're right. Mint, mint is an. Herb. Oh yeah, it's a it's a leafy herb. Uh, mint's Mint's great because it's really cheap to buy. It mm. comes in so many varieties. Um, like if you went down to Evergreen down the road, shout out to Evergreen. Shout out Evergreen. Uh, they have usually, I, I don't want to say they don't, anytime I've gone there, I've been able to find, they've labeled it like chocolate mint. It's a it's a little mint. It, isn't, it has a little bit slightly of a chocolate mint flavor. Mm. Spearmint, pineapple mint, orange mint. Um, yep. there's all kinds of mint mint. If you saw it in the wild, you think it was just an invasive weed. It grows really aggressively. So most of the time when people buy it, they buy it and keep it in pots because they don't want it to take over their garden mm. and it'll come back every year. So it's perennial. That's if you plant it in the wild, it, it usually, unless the soil goes bad or, you know, it'll, it'll come back on its own. It's commonly used as a tea. You know, you probably you can buy mint tea, which is just dried mint leaves in a little tea bag. Uh, mint medicinally or clinically, I can't say clinically because again, there's not enough uh, randomized study on it. But its primary function in that world is for digestive relief. So mint. IBS issues, stomach pain, upset stomach. It's commonly used to improve those symptoms and. Um, the research is limited, but it has been shown to assist with that. However, a warning was has been made also, though, if you have GERD, mm. it can agitate that in some people. So it's sort of this double-edged sword in digestion. Yeah. Um, GERD I associate with the upper end, you know, closer, you know, up, because it's a reflux issue. Um, but with IBS and things like that, some people use it and, and see positive benefit from it. But... I don't want to vouch for it on the clinical level because there's not enough research. Are you a fan of mint? Like, yeah, I like mint. How do you use it? Um, I actually like mint leaves. If you ever make lemonade, it's great in lemonade. Yeah, drop sweet. some fresh. Drop some fresh and sort of use like a spoon or something to. You want to. You want to break the leaf a little bit because the oils will seep out if you disturb the leaf. You got to disturb. That's why if you watch somebody make a like a mojito, I don't drink, but I've seen you know they take the like a mortar and pestle, but they take a little tool and they put it down in the drink and do this. Yep. 
that's them disturbing the leaf to get the flavor out. It has mm. to it secretes the oil. So well, maybe you don't want to say secrete in reference to your food. <laughs> I'm going to secrete mint into your food. Um, but that's how you would get the flavor. If you just drop it in plain, you might get a little bit of a flavor, but you want to kind of ruffle the leaf or, or cut it or shred it. It's so, so funny how I don't think of mint as an herb. Yeah, it, it goes great with it, with anything citrus. Mint and citrus are wonderful together, fresh. Mm. And it, maybe if you make a salad, you know how sometimes people make like yeah. a, a berry salad where you have greens, but you put strawberries or blackberries or raspberries and some vinegar. Yep. Um, sort of a sweet, savory salad. Mint leaves are a great addition to that. Super interesting. Um, it really brightens the flavor up. Um, mint's a very unique flavor. Like, I don't know of any other herbs that have a... Well, we have the descriptor, minty, like that cool. Cool. The, yeah. It's when I think cool, of mints, I think cool. Yeah, like like peppermint leaves or peppermint style is more has a more of a bite to it, mm. almost maybe bitter. And the spearmint has a sweeter, yeah. you know, a softer taste to it. I'm a spearmint fan. I like both, but I like spearmint better than peppermint. Um, it's it's also known to help freshen your breath because of that cool. It's a very strong flavor, so it will come out in your breath when you eat it. So mint's pretty cool. Uh, the last one is bay leaf. Bay leaf, I don't think, is as commonly known. B a y. B a y. B a y. Bay leaf. It's also it's a it's laurel, in parentheses. It's a laurel plant. Bay leaf is a, is a bush or tree. Some people call it a tree bush. Um, I've got one at my house. Uh, it the leaves are very tough. Like that that they, they're not. You know, if I went out to an oak tree and grabbed a leaf off of it, it's pretty flimsy, right? I could flap it in the wind. A bay leaf almost feels like. It feels like it's not real, like it, almost. Like it's it's a really tough leaf. It looks like just a pretty little simple leaf, but it's it's a tough leaf. Um, it's best to cook it whole. So you like you'd snip a leaf off the plant, or you can get them dried. Most of the time, when people cook with bay leaves, they're dried, and they impart actually. That's one where the dried versus fresh, the flavor is about the same. So bay leaves. Um, are most commonly used in slow cooked dishes. When uh, what's coming to my mind is when you are getting ready to cook something, you put the leaf in mm -hmm. the the pot, crock pot, or yeah, yeah, instant yeah. pot, yeah. So that's bay leaf. Bay leaf, yeah. It's this and big. It looks like a leaf. It's just a leaf. It's like a yeah. firm little leaf. Um, it almost it could smell sort of like leans evergreen smell but not that strong it has mm. a very unique taste bay leaf is one of my favorite flavors actually i know it most when because i like german food and a lot of german meat recipes call for bay leaf to be mm. put in with them and it imparts this very unique taste can you what is that taste like what? it's hard bay it's hard to describe <laughs> it i don't know how to describe bay leaf taste unless to taste it uh it's like evergreen could lean citrus but very muted it's not real strong um, so like leafy. It's not bitter like if you ate pine or smelled pine. It's it doesn't have what I would call an earthy taste, like a mm. like beets or something yeah. like that. Mm, yeah. Or I would hate it. No, it's just just very unique, nice flavor. It pairs well with vinegary things. German food uses a lot of vinegar. Yeah. Even the including the beef dishes, there's usually some vinegar in there or acidic food, so it pairs well with those. Um, it's it's usually put in stews and soups. Mm. Uh, you, another way you could use it is if you were cooking lentils. Yeah. You would put a bay leaf or two in there. You could do that. It also pairs well with maybe some rice if you want to put the leaf in with the rice when it's cooking. So you don't eat eat the leaf is something I you don't cook recommend with. eating the leaf. It's it's yeah. woody and it's tough. Yeah. Uh, even the leaf part is not literally woody, but it has that texture. You just mm. fish it out, and it puts a lot of flavor in there. Um, a lot of recipes usually call for one. Anytime I see a recipe, it's like whatever herb, I multiply it by three or four. <laughs> I love lots of bay leaf. Um, medicinally, the only one I could find of note um, was may lower blood sugar. <laughs> may lower blood sugar. The other thing was because it's an aromatic herb, meaning strong mm. in smell, um, it can stimulate your sinuses to move, which is nice. It's really so, nice. You eat a stew, it's got bay leaf in it, amongst other things, your nose might run. Yeah. You know, to clear out, you know. And um, let's see if I missed any of the foods that I like to pair it with. No, stews, meat, soups. Um, as far as cultural German food is what I associate it with. I love German food. Mm. Ugh. Um, there's a recipe, there's a dish called sauerbraten, which is a beef dish. It's I love wonderful. brats. I love any type of brat. Well, brat and sauerbraten's interesting. 
Um, sour brat, brat is like sausage or you know, it's like the um, bratwurst. Or yeah. Bratwurst, whatever the how. Sour braten is a different spelling. It's a beef dish. It's marinated for like three to six days mm. in a, a concoction of things. And bay leaf is one of those things. At least the sour braten I've had has a very strong bay taste, which I love. So that's bay leaf. I really like bay leaf. If you buy it, um, it'll grow big. Like it's, it grows into a tree. Um, it doesn't survive. the. You shouldn't keep it outside in the wintertime. So I bring it in. Um, I have a UV light in my laundry room, so I bring it in under the UV light so I don't lose my bay leaf plant. <laughs> but it, it's a pretty tough plant. It can endure, I think it can endure, you know, 40 degrees, but you don't want to go to below. It doesn't like that. Yeah. It likes hot, you know, full sun. So Super yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now, real quick before we close out the, the herb series, when you when you shop for herbs, it sounds like you're growing all these yourself. Uh, for you don't the most- have to, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to buy them and grow them just because in the long run it's cheaper. You know, you buy fresh herbs, it can be pricey. It depends on the season. So if you use a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, and you have to use... When you buy them fresh, there's a pressure to use them all quick. Yeah. Because they don't last very long fresh when, when they're cut. Yeah. The benefit of having it grown in a pot is you can cut some and the plant will continue to survive. You just cut as much as you need. Yep. So that pressure's not there. And you're going to have them early spring through late summer. I yeah. Mean, you know, early fall even, you'll have them. So that's a long time to be harvesting. Mm. So the one of these, though, cilantro is... Cilantro, I've been frustrated with before when I buy it because it doesn't seem to last long. Mm. It goes to seed very quickly, which means it starts shrinking at le- its leaves, and they're not as harvestable anymore, and it's just not as good. So once it bushes out, start using it. Um, but the other two... Well, mint's crazy. It'll grow. You, you could cut... 80% of that plant off in one cut, and it'll come back in like a week. It's that's, crazy. That's wild. So it's aggressive. <laughs> Herbs, man. Herbs. Herbs. Herb. This has been incredible. Thank you guys for watching uh, this series on herbs. Like I said before, we will link uh, part one below where we talk about basil, rosemary, and thyme. thyme. Um, so I guess I'll end with this. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Guys, <laughs> and thank you. As always, we'll see you next time on Dive Into Diet. Don't go away.